Yeah, good morning, you know, and uh Ooh, foo, foo, foo. another day, another day in paradise. Another day in paradise. Today is the 25th of March. 2020 and it's not just any ordinary Wednesday there's two things that are different we're in the middle of a global pandemic of a coronavirus that's the first thing that's different the second thing that's different is today is the funeral of a chap that none of you probably know, but the funeral of a father, a husband, a teacher, a work colleague, Jerry Walsh from Wicklow Town and formerly from County Mayo. Who died tragically on day? And Jerry's funeral is today in Wicklow. And unfortunately, because of this bloody virus, people can't attend. Which is a great shame for the chap. Because it would have been a huge funeral. Jerry Walsh, rest in peace, Jerry. God bless you. Condolences to your family, Tashling, and your other siblings, to your mother, to your two brothers and your two sisters. Jerry was only 51 or 52 years of age. That's all. Life can be so cruel. May you rest in peace, Jerry. So, this morning I came up my usual N11 and honest to God, I never in all my days of driving did I see a road. Look at this clown, what in the name of God what in the name of God is this clown doing? So he's driving along in lane number one on an empty road and then he just decides he's going to drive out into lane number two. What in the name of... I mean, what way does a person's brain work? And here comes a car now. Watch this. It'll be interesting. He goes back in. Look. Back in now. Look. I don't know, I don't understand it. I, I, I don't understand the mentality. Anyway. It's 5.33 a.m. As I said, I never saw the M50 as deserted. And if it was if it was Christmas Eve night, maybe I'd understand it. Maybe about half two or maybe about midnight or something like that the early hours of Christmas morning maybe it might be that quiet but I came the whole length of the road from Wicklow town all the way to the Blanchestown turn off for the N3 and I never passed one car one car all the way not one It's going to be another nice day, I think, by the look of it. Hopefully.
Hey, you need to learn some fucking road manners. What are you doing going from fucking lane one into lane fucking two? You got no fucking cop on or what? As there is someone who has missed his turn by the look of it. Or is he broken down? I don't know. All oh, the roads are so quiet. It's such a pleasure. It's such a pleasure to, to go home in the evening at the moment. And I just, I just posted something yesterday evening. I was just on the way home on the N11 and it's normally a killer, but it was really, really quiet yesterday and for the last couple of days, which is joyful for me. And yes, and yes, you have these unmarked road policing cars trying to catch people doing a couple of kilometers over the speed limit on an empty dual carriageway. Now that has nothing got to do with road safety. That is everything, everything to do with revenue collecting for the government. They should be ashamed of themselves. The road policing unit are the most hated section of the Gardaí. Even the ordinary regular rank and file guards don't like the road policing unit because their opinion of them, and I have this from the horse's mouth, is that they do their own mother. All of these people who pile into this grouping are little Hitlers who were bullied at school and this is their revenge on society now that they have a uniform. That's what they are. 99.9% .9 of them are little ex-bullies or ex-little ex, ex uh, creeps, geeks from school that were bullied. Now, there are exceptions. I've met one or two nice fellas from the traffic corps okay who are actually sound you know philip earl is one of them he's from dublin castle and there's one or two others among them that are actually sound but the vast majority of those are just people who are getting the revenge back on society for being bullied as children in my opinion it's my opinion before you start shouting and roaring Bleeding hell, now you're on fire this morning, Dad. Uh, yes, I am, Mo. I'm, uh, I'm not in bad old form today, Mo. No traffic, that's why. Yes, that's, that's why, Mo. There's no traffic. Oh, it's great. If it was like this all the time, it'd be just wonderful. It'd be just wonderful. I find my stress levels now have gone down a lot during the week as well. That I'm not dealing with these, with the, with the same level of, of, of morons than I normally would have to deal with on a day driving up here in Dublin. You see a lot of tower cranes there. A lot of work still going on. I think the building sites are still open from what I know. But I, I didn't expect to get my uh, usual run this morning because the factory that produces this stuff over in the UK is closed. But they're still shipping trailers, so as long as they're shipping them, I'll collect them. I'll collect them. All that's really on the road this morning are trucks. It's all I can see, really. The odd van here and there, but car traffic is almost non-existent. Oh God, if it was like this all the time, wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be wonderful? Just looking at the back of Caffrey's Sheru trailer there. 
And they're a lovely fridge. Look at your man here. Get in on your own side of the road. What are you doing taking up? No need to be taking up two, two lanes. Um, I was just looking at the back of his trailer there. Just around where the number plate are. There's a kind of a it's metal either side of it. Like aluminium, stainless steel. And some clown has decided to stick those horrible dangerous goods stickers on it, which have been peeled off. And they look absolutely woeful. Do you want to know what one of my pet hates is? I'll show you one of my pet hates. This, this is one of my pet hates. Look at this. These things here are there for a reason, right? You put the stickers on them or you turn them inside out and fellas go and put the stickers on the fridge and destroy the fridge. Okay? Look at that. Look, look what's left. Look what's left on the fridge. Now, when that fridge gets dirty, that'll be black. It's just a joke why people are so stupid or so lazy that they insist on sticking those fucking stickers. Look, look what's left on the fridge. Why can't they put them on there? That's what they're for. Fucking idiots. Seriously. Ten to six now. The ferries, of course, because of the weather has been so pleasant. All the ferries are pretty much on time. Like by rule of thumb, Stena Line gets in before Irish ferries. Normally it does. This road is, this road now in the port, apart from these humps here, is a nightmare. You'll see what I mean as we go up here. It really, really badly needs to be resurfaced. I try and stay out in this lane because that lane is much worse. The dikes and hollows in it. Our containers are queuing already, you can see them there. The hazard light's on. That's how early the queue starts. And it goes all the way down right into the container port. That's one job I will guarantee you that I will never do is containers. Now I know the people who are doing them thinking, here, there's no such thing as stripping curtains or strapping down lows. Yeah, okay. But I still wouldn't do it. What a beautiful morning. What an absolute beautiful day. Well, Stena Line is in anyway. I see the Stena Adventurer is in. And the Oscar Wilde, or sorry, the WB Yates is in. The uh, Ulysses is off for a refit. Whatever that means, I don't know. So the ferries are still running as normal, thankfully. Because if they weren't, we really would be in trouble work-wise. Now nobody here in front of me either. And there was no customs here yesterday, which is even better. Now. Oh yeah. Uh, DGR 2850, please. Gee, it's lovely to see the place so quiet. Oh, that's great. 
isn't it? I came up there from Wicklow this morning and never passed one car the whole way up from there to Blanchestown. Even going home in the evening is great. There's gas there, it's nice heading home there, you know, Paddy's nice. Two o'clock in the morning they're leaving here. And I think I've had one car in the past week uh, leaving the course. So Where do you live? Uh, swords. Jesus. It's delightful, isn't it? Well, you cycle, do you? Yeah. To swords? You joking or what? I don't know. I don't know. I it's only 16, 16 now. So when do you like a, a March hair? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I'm the only one here, look. There's a Sten Adventure over there. Now the traffic's starting to come off the Sten Adventure there. Traffic's starting to come off that, but there's nothing coming off the, the WB8 yet. Now there's one other tr truck down here waiting. And then there's just me. Oh, it's the Ulysses. The Ulysses is back on. The Ulysses is back on. I said, I thought that was in, uh, in dry dock, but it must be back on. I don't know why these, um, I don't know why these fellas and these, these tug yokes that take the trailers off the boat, I don't know why they're not already there with their engines running waiting. They should be. I think I'll go back even further here. I'll stay here. Lovely. Hey Ned. Hey yes, Mo. Look at that bleeding agent there. <laughs> Billy, what on earth are you doing with that on your face? I don't want to cross that road of earth. I, I can't hear you, Billy. What are you saying? Just I can't really hear what you're saying. He said he doesn't want to catch that bleeding virus. Uh, what what virus is that, Billy? I don't want to catch that old caravan of virus. <laughs> Bleeding hell, you hear what he said, Ned? He doesn't want to catch the caravan of virus. It's a coronavirus, you bleeding fool, you. The caravan of virus is what you lot do every summer from June until September. That's the caravan of virus. Oh, corona, caravan, it's all the same. It's not all the same, Billy. Uh, Billy, it's just completely different, Billy. The coronavirus, as Moe's pointed out, is what's happening at the moment. The caravanavirus is you lot dumping your rubbish every summer from June to September. Bleeding right, Ned. Stay them going around. Billy, take that off, will you? You bleeding fool. Who will take it off for? Oh, you're not supposed to. You're supposed to be practicing social distancing. Social distancing? Ha! <laughs> you're joking, or what? I'm not feeling very social, Billy. Besides, I suppose the good thing about you wearing that is it keeps the smell of your bleeding breath in. Who oh, got two fucking switches out for? <laughs> Caravana virus. Do you ever hear the lights of it, Ned? Bleeding Egypt. Billy, you're a fool. Who oh, are you for? At least they're not going to catch the virus. You are a bleeding virus, Billy. You're a big bleeding virus. And don't ever let anyone tell you any different. And that right, Ned? Uh, Mo, leave him alone. If he wants to wear the mask, let him wear the mask. Oh, exactly. It's none of your jaw business. None to do with jaw. You and your bleeding caravan of virus. Ha! <laughs> you bleeding fool, yeah. So this Irish Ferries is just unloading there now. And uh, there's not a fortune of stuff on it. Which means that I should have my trailer by... What time is it now? 6.04 6.04 There is the first trailer off the boat 
so I should have my trailer by half six and that'll leave me okay to get through the city centre I'm not allowed to be in the city centre after seven o'clock but in the last couple of days because of the traffic is lighter um, it's not been a problem and I hope today will be the same so 2850 is the trailer I'm looking for I'm waiting for so I don't actually know whether it's a plain white one or whether it's actually sign written I honestly don't know it depends I just have to keep an eye on everything that comes off and hopefully it won't be too long hopefully Network International Cargo Swiss Port Air Freight that is You see these little white vans running about the place There's Jones Transport One of Marks and Sparks uh, These little white vans you see running about the place Are supply vehicles for the ferry O'Leary International with one of Caffrey's units on it. One of Dixon's. That's one of those yokes run by LPG. One of Hannon's. Hannon's do some amount of stuff over and back to the UK. There's two Hannon's there together coming off. There's Fagan pulling a Norfolk line trailer. Another one of Virginia's, based in County Kiev, and Wise Transport, who are based in Dublin, in the same yard as Dixon's. The two of them share a yard. And here comes one of these little Polish vans. Another one of Marks and Sparks trailers. And Synchron. Now, you see there's Hales Freight. Every morning... Without fail, there's at least five Hales Freight trailers taken off this ship unaccompanied. The Knights of Old, I think they're based in Essex in England. They started doing um, deliveries to Ireland there a couple of years ago. I think they're tied in with Redhead International, but I couldn't be sure. You'd never know who's at the top of these uh, companies. It both's practically empty now. And there's no customs here. Well, that's one another good benefit of the virus. Keep them customs away because they're nothing but a fucking nuisance. And there's a second Hales Freight gone up. They ship some amount of trailers. Like, I don't understand this. Look, there's a tug there sitting there, right? And there's another one sitting beside me here. Why aren't they being used to, to unload the boat? Surely if they, the, quicker, the quicker they can do the turnaround, the better it is for the company. They don't seem to be in any rush most of the time, them lads. <laughs> I don't know. Remember what I was saying about Hales Freight. Here comes the third of Hales Freight trailers unaccompanied off the boat. That's the third one now. Gwynedd Shipping. Another company based just outside Hollyhead. I'm assuming it's in Gwynedd, which is in Wales, North Wales. Very slow taking these trailers off. I have to say, they're very, very slow taking these trailers off. Here's this man, here's trailer. See this guy in the blue Scania? That's his trailer there. See, there he goes, look. Beep, beep, he says. So that's his trailer. Lucky for him, he's he's on the ball. So it's myself and LTF still waiting. Jeez, lads, you're so very slow taking these trailers off. Yeah, I don't have all day, you know. Want to get trailer from boat, you know. Don't want to wait all day. Another one of Marks and Sparks coming off and McBurney on the top shelf. Normally they put the hazardous trailers on the top. Trailers that are carrying hazardous material or so-called has or whatever they call them. 
they always put them on the top deck because the top deck is open at the front and they're allowed to transport trailers that way on, but it has to be on the open deck you cannot have hazardous trailers on a closed deck it's not allowed so there's a piece of useless information for you not that you didn't already know to see what a maxi trailer is up there in the distance that's the crowd that Jay works for in the UK Jay in the UK works for them Life is a highway, I'm gonna take it all night long. Uh, that's where they go, up on top. Now, it doesn't mean that if a trailer's up there, it has to be hazardous, but trailers that are on the top deck and open deck in a boat are hazardous, trailers. That's where they go, but you, as I said, you can also have other trailers up there. Come on, lads, get a move on. Come on, come on, come on. Schneller, 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 schneller. Hurry up, to be fucked, I want me trailer. Are uh, you taking too fucking long to empty boat? You want to get a fucking move on, eh? Like normally this would be buzzing. Buzzing, buzzing. Zoom, 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 zoom. Today, very quiet. And here's this guy's trailer, I think. LTF. I think he's waiting on this trailer. Total Cargo Services. We'll see now. I think that's his trailer. See him over there. LTF. I think that's his trailer. I could be wrong. Maybe I am. Yeah, I thought that was your trailer, buddy. Maybe not. And there's still a few runners coming off the boat. Here comes Polar. The polar bear is coming down the ramp. The polar bear. Look at the polar bear. Look at him coming down the ramp there now. The polar. They're based in South Armagh as far as I know. <laughs> J and N. Another gist trailer which is Marks and Spencer's. And one of O'Leary's. <laughs> That's Willie O'Leary as opposed to Robert O'Leary. Robert O'Leary is another brother they're a Wexford based company but as far as I know they have 99.9% .9 foreigners driving for them <sighs> come on lad schneller 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 quick okay jive express delivery uh, more than likely Polish but could be Another Eastern European company. Now, another one of Valeria's coming. Now, I'm gonna turn on my engine here because this, do you hear that buzzing noise? Do you hear that buzz? The air dryer in this truck is knackered. And every time you switch it off, you have to listen to this. Every time you switch it off, you have to listen to that buzzer. Drive you around the twist. Now, thank God for that. That would literally drive you insane. And that's what I have to listen to every morning for 10 minutes when I turn this thing on. Still runners coming off the top deck. They must have been buried behind trailers. Here's one of Dixon's coming off. That's a lone trailer there. They're based in Kesh. The north of Ireland. There's a Dixon six legger, horrible looking yokes. And still some coming off the bottom deck. Who's this now? <laughs> I can't see a name on the front of that. Shrew Fridge six legger. Possibly English, don't know. Another Virginia's. I hate them small wheels. Them small little wheelbarrow wheels on them trucks are absolutely rough looking. They really are. Ah, oh, come on, lads. Come on! 
Where's me fucking trailer? I want me fucking fridge now. Do I want fucking waiting? Here over fucking 15 fucking minutes. Fuck's sake. Oh, at least it ain't fucking raining, I suppose. So here's one of Jones coming off. They're based in Rush County, Dublin. Their main contract, I think, is with DHL. I could be wrong. I know they have their own work too, but they do a lot for DHL. And they do a lot of hazardous. Uh, very, very nice plant. A mixture between Scania's and Volvo's. I don't think they have any dafts. See, they're starting to load this boat already. Look, they're starting to load this boat already and my trailer's not even off yet. Lads, would you not take the trailers off? And when you're going on to, to leave a trailer on, would you not take another one off with you, know? Don't understand this. You know, you, they take maybe 10 or 12 trailers off the boat and then half of them start loading the boat. But okay, if you want to load the boat, that's fine. But when you take a trailer onto the boat, why do you come back off empty? Why would you, would you not be better off taking a trailer off than bringing one on, than taking one off? Would it not be better than bringing one on, coming back empty, bringing one on, coming back empty, bringing one on, when there's still trailers on the boat? I do not understand that. Can somebody explain that to me? Why these tugs, I didn't say thugs, I said tugs. These tug master things, that joke there, them. Why, when they're going on with a, a loaded trailer, why don't they take another loaded trailer off the boat when they're coming back down rather than coming down empty. I don't know. Here's one of Dixon's. Still waiting on my trailer. Still no sign of it. Uh, it's 22 minutes past six now. That's 22 past six. So I'm nearly 20 minutes now waiting. No sign of my trailer yet. Here's two more trailers off. Neither of them are mine. One of them is Caffrey's and the other one's a Curtain Cider and I don't know whose it is. Loans, one of Loans. I think, I think Cash is in Fermanagh. Here's a DG McArdle trailer. Now one is just mine. Yeah, that's my trailer. Mina, mina. Yeah, 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 mina trailer, yeah. Now, if you don't stop these lads here, they'll have it they'll have it dropped up to the sky. I'll do them. Thanks. You see, if I don't do that, if I don't drop that trailer there, your man will wind the legs down so high that it'll take me half an hour to unwind them. Thank you very much. You can see how quiet it is in here. There's very, very little around. So, oh. 2850. Nice clean fridge, unlike the truck. <laughs> hey, the truck fucking dirty. Would you not go and wash the fucking truck, Ned?
Okay. Ah, you see, this thing doesn't go into. Uh, it won't go back. It won't go back into. You put it into neutral, and it, it won't go in. Takes a couple of minutes for it to go in. I haven't got a couple of minutes, so. Oh yeah! Come on! Come on! Come on! Right. Have to turn the taps on. One tap. Two taps. Right, we're ready to rock. Hey. Don't mind the dirt of the truck. It's only dirt. It's only dirt. TGR 2850, that's the one. Right, away we go. Whew. DGR 2850. To have a new, have a, have a new thing here. They don't take the ticket off you now. You have a ticket here, they don't take the ticket now. They want you to tell them what trailer number you have. Oh, look at that lovely sunrise. Look at that beautiful sunrise. Wouldn't it be lovely now to be going somewhere? Wouldn't it be lovely now to be getting on the French, the French ferry now on a motorbike? Going for a nice long cruise somewhere. Hey, it would be lovely. Very, very quiet in the port. Now I know the containers are always sort of busy, but truck wise, it's very, very quiet. Here's Willsboro. Willsboro. They do a lot of the TNT work. Down to Northampton, as far as I know, they're just off the ferry down to Northampton take their time off, pick up another trailer and back for the boat that night. There'd be nothing wrong with that. Beautiful Scania, absolutely cracking. You see how rough this road is? Like I'm literally only doing five or 10 miles an hour and you can see how rough, how rough this road is. See all the container lads queuing up there. Now I don't know what, what port or whatever they're going into, but this is every single day these lads have to queue. I don't know how they stick it. I don't know how they stick it. No white man would stick that. So it's 6.31. When I'm on the move, I'm predicting that I will be at my destination at seven o'clock. That's giving me a half an hour. That's giving me 30 minutes. The biggest holdup I have here in the morning is that bloody train that comes out every, well, every second day at 10 to seven. But I'm ahead of it today. 
feel how rough this road is. You know, it's, it's no wonder that trucks have bushings gone and, and stuff, you know. It's nothing to do with the way you're driving, it's just the road. The road surface is, 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 is brutal. You're literally getting thrown around in the cab. There's a green light we've missed. Feck it anyway. Feck it anyway. Right, we got this far, so. And we're off. You don't get long, you don't get long with those lights. A couple of seconds is all you get. Couple of seconds. I just passed one of Grant's up there. I think that could have been Eno himself, although I think he's in a Volvo now. That was a Renault. See the surface on this now. Have a look at this or listen to it. Look at the surface. Look. Look at that surface. It's literally in bits. In bits. So we're driving along the Liffey, there's a there's a navy ship over there. Do you feel that? Do you hear that? Do you hear that? I mean how would any how would any truck how would any truck not be a bag of bowls after a couple of months on this road? How would any truck not be falling apart when you're driving on this kind of a road surface? There's a few here queuing now, but it's nothing nothing anywhere near as bad as what it, it is. Like, you want to see this here on an ordinary working day when there's no lockdowns or no coronavirus or nothing. You want to see how bad this is. Even at this hour of the morning, it's not too bad at, you know, 6.35, 6.40. But you come anywhere near 7 o'clock, it's a flipping nightmare. And that's ignorant now. See that bus, what that bus has done there? That is the height of ignorance. There was no need for him whatsoever to pull up there and barge in in front of them taxis. Why didn't he just let them two taxis go? He didn't, look, he's trying to barge out in front of that. That just shows you the ignorance of some of these drivers that drive these Swords Express buses. What did he, why didn't he just stay where he was? I could have, I could have gone up on the outside of him, but I didn't. I hung back to let him go, but he's trying to barge now in front of the taxis. He knows well that the road is closed on his, on his lane is closed. And he's, look, he's barging his way. Look, literally took the nose, literally took the nose off them taxis. What an ignorant pig. What an absolute fucking pig. And look, where's it got him? Where, what has he gained by doing that? What's he gained? Those lads shouldn't have let him go. 53345 and 54047. He shouldn't have allowed that pig to barge in front of you like that. I wouldn't allow it. Just an absolute impatient, ignorant pig. <laughs> so whoever's driving 142D 21431, Swords Express, on the morning of the 25th of March 2020, at 6.37pm, at the Samuel Breckett Bridge, you're a fucking pig. You're a fucking pig. You can see the way I hung back to let him go whenever he was finished dropping off his passengers. But he didn't, he didn't have the same respect for these taxi drivers. He just barged in front of them.
He'll be stopping again up the road here. has to stop again up the road. Jesus, look at that, that road, that's unreal. What are you doing? What are you doing? See, he has to stop there now again. Ignorant pig. This bus lane here to my right is a 24 hour bus lane, so you can't go into that, and I won't go into it. And most, most of the buses that come down on this corridor here to my right are actually going straight on. Look, there's a pair of bow legs if ever I saw them, look. Oh dear, what a pair of bow legs. Which are real cool, dear. Which are, which are shades. I think you know a lot of the time that people who who people who run like this in the middle of the city centre are more interested in who's looking at them than they are of you know getting exercise. There's a good few now here turning right all the same. So this is Tara Street. It's a Tara Street bridge there. It's a height restriction there of 16 feet, 4.88 meters. It's not one of the regular bridges to get hit. Coming from the other direction it is. I'm just going to do my usual here now because I'll tell you um, these bus lanes are not in operation. This bus lane here is not in operation until 7am. So I'm not doing anything wrong. Look, there's a chap there, there's a sleeping bag, look, sleeping out, look, God love him. One little piece of newspaper he has, look, packing away the sleeping bag. So sad, the homeless problem in this country is so sad. Keeling straight from our farm. I thought it was a bit shiny looking, all right. It's a brand new Mercedes Sprinter. And she's a twin wheel as well, very nice. Come here, the Chinese, they're fierce intelligent like, they catch on real quick. Come here, look at this, look. Say queer. Queer. Now try and listen to me, say queer. Queer. Not fucking courier. Queer. Try it again, look. Queer. Queer. Huh? <laughs> Okay, and we're off. Oh, 
Well, I'm not going to try and be a dickhead here and, and, and overtake your man there. I know well that unless he's turning over the bridge that he's going to want to get into this lane as soon as we've crossed Capel Street Bridge. So I'll just hang back and let him. I'll just hang back here and let him. If he wants to come into this lane, then I'll let him. Just give that cyclist a bit of room. There he goes. You see, that's what I'm saying. I, 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 I wouldn't... Uh, I let him in there. I know he wants to be in this lane. So in you go there, buddy. No worries. We're all trying to get somewhere. That's a Dutch trailer, but it's an Irish truck pulling it. I don't see any company name on it. It looks like one of those uh, Mulgrews. It looks like an ex Mulgrew or something. But like, I'm not, I'm not, I, I don't behave like a dick, you know what I mean? I just wanted to get, make use of the bus lane. That doesn't mean I'm trying to get ahead of, you know, does this, some people have this incurable comp, competitive streak where they have to try and get in front of everyone. I'm not bothered. Once I can get to where I'm going at a reasonable time, I'm quite prepared to live and let live. You're a liar, Ned. You're a liar. Shut up, Mo. You're a liar, Mo. Shut up, Billy. Now, you see, what I won't allow, though, is the likes of this fella here. I won't allow the likes of him to get in front of me, you see. That's what, you see, this is this, this fella here. This fella here you see along my side actually wants to be in this lane. But he thought he was going to, he thought he was going to get in front of me and barge in in front of me. But I wouldn't let the likes of that. I see, there he goes. Look, in behind me there now, you see. I wouldn't allow the likes of that. Thought he was going to come up. He thought he was going to come up on the inside of me. I'm blocking him now because he thought he was going to go on the, in the other lane. See, I won't allow that. I won't allow a dick like that. Because, you see, and he's out now in this lane. He's gone from one lane now to the other, but I can tell you now, I'll, I'll sicken him. He won't get by because I'll sit, I'll sit right beside this, this truck. I'll sit right beside this truck. Oh, he's going to move in, unfortunately. I sit right beside him the whole way. You, you fucking dick. Put your seatbelt hanging out the back door. Yeah, you see, he tried to, he, he came up along on the outside of me, and at the end of that road is a right turn lane. And uh, he thought he was going to get up past me and pull in in front of me, in between me and this chap in front of me. But I wouldn't allow it. I'd close up the gap. He can't get in then, so he was forced to come in behind me. And then he tried to go up the inside of me. That's why I moved into the left lane. He'd have to get up a little bit earlier now in the morning to be trying to cod me like that. So this is a 24 hour bus lane. So I don't want to get into it just yet, but now I will. I'll just hang back in case your man decides he's going, no, he's going straight on there. So, uh, that's grand, that worked out all right. This is Kilmainham. Look at, look at this now in the morning. There's normally be a big line, a solid line of traffic all the way up here. At 10 to seven in the morning, there'd be a big solid line of traffic. And look at it, practically nothing, practically nothing on the road. 10 minutes to seven. It's wonderful, like, I mean, well, it's not wonderful. I mean, the, the reason that they, there's no one on the road is because we're in, we're, in a, we're in a sort of a partial lockdown. But for, for me, for me driving in the city, this is, it couldn't be any better. It's 10 to, 10 to seven now. We left the port 20 minutes ago. It normally takes, on a normal morning, it can take anything from 50 minutes to an hour and 10 minutes to do this journey. But today, we're on 20 minutes so far and we're nearly there and it's only 20 minutes gone. Only 20 minutes. 
Look, nothing here on this in front of me here. You'd normally have a line of cars here as well. Nothing. Nada. That road surface is still very rough though. That's Davit Road there to the right hand side. That Davit Road, you see the canal there, look. There's the canal and there's a cycle track that goes the whole length. You see the sign there, cycle track. It goes the whole length of that canal there. And yet, cyclists still insist on cycling on that narrow Davit Road. It's absolutely nothing if not total ignorance and disregard for motorists. Now, let's go. I swear. See another cycle track in there. And there's a cycle lane here. So there's no, there's no, uh, there's plenty of facilities for cyclists to stay safe if they want to. The problem is a lot of them just do it, I think, for pig iron, to be pigs, to be ignorant, just to annoy motorists. So we're turning right here onto Herberton Road. And we're literally only going the length of the truck and we're turning right in the gate as well. I'm not gonna make these lights now because there's too many dawdlers here in front of me. There's a very bright sunshine. Oh, maybe I will make them. Didn't think I was gonna make them, but I did. By a whisker. Now, and in we go. This is where I go every single morning, same place all the time. What's your man at here now? He'd normally have swung around, you see. He'd normally have swung around. That's JW Transport, I think. He'd normally have swung around, but I'm going to I'm going to just pull in out of here. Let him let him swing around. I just stay here and let him do his let him do his U-turn. There he goes. There now he's doing his U-turn. That's what he should have done when he came in. I don't know why he didn't. Come on, come on, come on! All the way around. All the way around. Come on, Mr. JW, whatever you call yourself. Come on, come on, come on. JVW Transport. It's all well done up with his lights anyway. Looks like an African driving that. Fair play to him. Fair play to him. Very unusual. I'm collecting the load down in Port Leash. And it's plus three. So I want to make sure that I have the fridge running before I go down there. No point. <coughs> it's no point in landing down in Port Leash, and the fridge won't start. You know. So always before you leave, check that the fridge is working, and switch it on. This button here is a stop-start button. Switch it on to stop-start, so it'll keep it at the temperature that you want. So when you get to where you're going the temperature will already be right. So set point is plus five. I just drop it down to plus three. Okay. Now, programming new set point. Plus three degrees is a new set point. There's two zones in this. There's another fridge at the back of the unit. That's a small one. And that zone is switched off, which is what we want because there's 22 pallets going on this trailer. So it's going to take up the whole trailer. We don't want the split door down. And that's when you'd use the second fridge if you had two different temperature loads. Maybe frozen stuff at the front 
and ambient at the back or maybe chilled so once this starts up then we can head on just takes a few minutes to start okay right so currently at the moment the temperature is at 10.3 degrees the set temperature is 3 degrees at the back of the fridge is 9.8 but that zone is switched off so what will happen is that I just want to check that that's on stop start actually yeah when you see the circle with the two black dots in it that tells you it's on stop start right now we can go and get there knowing that we're going to be able to load it